Hello and welcome to Lockdown Economy Nepal, a local edition of a social non-profit initiative to help small businesses and self-employed professionals overcome the challenges of the pandemic. In Nepal, it is being done in collaboration with NYEF Kathmandu Chapter, a membership-based non-profit organization dedicated to create outstanding entrepreneurs and all the contacts, a global think tank for sustainable development based in Amsterdam. My name is Susan Lal Manandar, host of the TV series, and I'd like to welcome everyone who joined us for this session. Today, my guest is Europe Strasta, who is the co-founder of Snowball Capital. Hello, Europe G. How are you? I'm good, Susan. Uh, thanks for having me here. Welcome to the interview series. And today, we're going to talk about investments. And the global economy has been a huge subject matter in this time of pandemic. And uh, investments, uh, what stocks you're supposed to uh, go after, that's all the discussion going on in the stock market sphere, right? So we're going to talk about what the stock market went through during the lockdown uh, in a while, but let's get started with the introduction of your organization, Europe G. So please introduce us to Snowball Capital. Uh, sure. Uh, so Snowball Capital is uh, basically an investment firm. Uh, we run one fund. Uh, we primarily invest uh, in uh, equity markets, uh, obviously in the party equity markets only. So that's pretty much it. And uh, what is the size of your team? Uh, currently, we're just uh, four people, uh, including myself uh, and, and the co-founder. Uh, so we have four of us. Uh, it's been the four of us since day one, and it's, it's still the four of us. And who are your clients? So uh, our clients, uh, we're a little different in the sense that uh, so we're a private investment company. So. Uh, by, by law, we're only allowed 100 shareholders uh, and our shareholders themselves uh, are the clients because those are the funds we, we manage. Uh, so legally, we're allowed 100. Uh, right now, we're probably around uh, 20. Uh, so we have, probably have around 20 clients. Great. And now talking about the lockdown in Nepal, what kind of problems did it bring in your organization? Uh, so... Uh, the lockdown was, of course, uh, somewhat unexpected, but uh, surprisingly, more than uh, creating any problems, it was actually really good for the organization. Uh, it gave us time to uh, look after things that we uh, could not uh, due to the daily, uh, you know, busyness of things. Uh, so actually, it didn't really give us problems per se. Uh, it actually gave us more time to think and reflect and, and, and actually be better investors over time. Uh, but I will take a step back. I will uh, talk about certain small issues we had. As a firm, we have two sides to things. Of course, there's the research side, the investment side. That's where we actually generate the returns for, for our shareholders. Uh, and then uh, the other side is marketing uh, and then getting more shareholders to come in, pull in, pull, pull in the funds with us, etc. So the marketing side definitely took a hit. Uh, certain investors, uh, very high net investors who were supposed to invest, uh, pulled out due to, uh, due to the lockdown. They were obviously scared that uh, things might hit the fan. Um, but uh, then again, uh, in terms of marketing as well, it was actually a good thing because we had time to put out and publish more memos, more and more uh, marketing reports, more uh, we could get our thoughts on paper and actually distribute it to potential investors. So overall, I think it's a net positive for us. All right. And during the lockdown, a lot of services were restricted. And yesterday we had a discussion about this as well. Uh, the stock market itself was open for a limited amount of time. What kind of strategy did you take uh, on an investment front to make sure that your portfolio is in the right position? Uh, so you're right. The stock market was pretty much closed. Uh, actually, that was the biggest uh, effect of the lockdown. The market was entirely shut. Uh, but what kind of steps we took? Uh, so Sujan, I was telling you, we believe uh, as a firm, as uh, personally as well, that uh, generally human behavior uh, is very predictable. Uh, we know for a fact that uh, human beings uh, get used to things, no matter how good or, or, or bad, they think anything is the new normal. So we always, uh, you know, we like to use the word new normal for every everything, new Nepal after the earthquake, new normal after the COVID, but <laughs> it's, it's essentially the same thing. So we were actually very optimistic. We knew it, it would be uh, hard for certain sectors and, and maybe even the financial institutions, et cetera. But we also knew that it was very temporary. Uh, so 
in terms of what strategy we we used or, or, or what steps we took during the lockdown or right after, uh, we were actually quite aggressive uh, in the sense that we started buying uh, even before the lockdown when a lot of investors were pricing in a potential corona threat to Nepal. Uh, but after the lockdown, the the period of recovery uh, or, or uh, the stock market was down for a very brief moment. Uh, it didn't take too long for, for it to come back. Uh, so we actually were aggressive, we we're optimistic. We knew that everyone would be used to Corona. The fear was very high when there was one case in, in the country. Uh, but now there's, uh, I guess it's reducing right now, but even when there was thousands of cases every day, uh, we're, we're pretty much back to normal. So uh, that's that's exactly what we had uh, thought. So that's how we have positioned our portfolio. All right, and were there any strategies that did not work out? Uh, yes, we were. Uh, I, I guess we're not as aggressive as we should have been. Um, our philosophy uh, is based on a value based, you know, the Buffett school of investing. So what he says is, when everybody is really fearful, then you should be really greedy. And when everybody's greedy, that's when you should be fearful. So we knew everybody was fearful and the prices were hitting rock bottom. Uh, but we thought it would go down further. We, we, I guess, overestimated or underestimated people's fear. They were not as scared as we thought. So that was actually a mistake we made. We didn't go all in. Uh, we were uh, cautiously optimistic, whereas we should have been uh, extremely aggressive. So, uh, so that was one, one thing that uh, I, I guess uh, we didn't do right. All right, let's talk, let's talk a little bit more about this because I also want to understand how your clients were behaving during the lockdown because yesterday uh, we talked about, and right now also you have mentioned that not a lot of people panicked, right? They were not, they were not like selling all over the place. What kind of behavior did your clients show during the lockdown? You know, surprisingly, uh, like we discussed yesterday and then, uh, like I just mentioned, people were not as scared as, as the media uh, portrayed things to be. Uh, of course, people are at home. Uh, their their regular, uh, you know, day to day businesses were heavily affected. Uh, also, but people who had access to capital pre COVID still have the same kind of access to that capital, and now at a cheaper rate. So when uh, when your industries and your you know businesses that you have to face customers are are extremely slow, I think a lot of people actually move to the stock market, uh, which which uh, you know makes sense. Uh, the the extreme crazy prices that we're seeing right now, the extreme jump in the, the index is uh, partly attributed to that as well. Uh, but talking about my particular set of clients, uh, they were steadfast. Nobody, uh, uh, you know, a potential client, I guess, pulled out. But uh, the clients that I did have, nobody uh, panicked. Nobody wanted to sell. In fact, people were uh, contemplating investing even more. Uh, so that was a pleasant surprise. But that means lesser opportunities for us. The more people are fearful, it actually works out better for us. So, uh, so you know, lockdown uh, was not as bad as I expected it to be for the stock market. Great. Now, let's talk about your peers and other institutional investors. Uh, what kind of strategies did they take during the lockdown? So, uh, the industry, uh, you know, it's it's... Transparent to a certain level, uh, your, your public mutual funds, uh, your public companies, are, are uh, they report their uh, activities every month. But a lot of private funds or even merchant banks or even portfolio management companies, they actually don't, the information of what they're doing is actually very hard to find unless you're talking to them directly uh, or you're invested in them, I guess. So a couple of people I knew sort of priced in the corona virus, so they started selling before the lockdown even. Uh, and uh, judging by the market, very few people actually sold a lot. Uh, mostly they uh, stayed put. Uh, they did not sell or buy. Uh, trading activity was extremely low uh, during the days that the market was open. Uh, when uh, I guess some retail investors sold. But talking about peers, uh, besides one or two maybe funds, uh, most of them stayed put. Uh, they were not very aggressive, nor were they very uh, conservative or panicking either. So, uh, you know, it was actually not very eventful in, the, in terms of what the lockdown did for the stock market. If anything, it was actually for the positive, you know, the things we talked about. Yeah. All right, so now let's talk about the nature of the stock market itself. Yesterday, we talked about how it has this cycle of going through these highs and lows and it repeats every few years. Um, 
where was this cycle right when the pandemic hit and how did it affect the stock market you know sujan you had mentioned that you you don't know much about the stock market but you got the the very heart of the market correct <laughs> so uh it is uh, exactly right the market uh, mimics human behavior it mimics economic activity to a certain level and and both both of those things uh, are are cycles so yes uh, even that and people keep talking about i, I didn't mention this earlier but people keep talking about how nepal market is different you know in nepal things don't work like this in nepal it's not like america or india or whatever but human beings all over the world people are are the same our behavior are are our nature the way we do things the way we think the way we get scared or it's it's essentially the same that's why the cycle is so uh it's such a predictable thing about the stock market the timing of the cycle is very unpredictable you don't know when the cycle is going to turn so i'm not uh, claiming to be a market timer but you know that it will turn uh, for the better or for worse so yes so it's also like a pendulum swing yeah i mentioned so it goes through extreme optimism at times and extreme pessimism at times so i'm taking it back to the human behavior of it when we're scared we're really scared when everybody's panicking we add to the panic so that's when panic selling happens when everybody's uh you know no one's making money when there's a few bad things that happen then that's when so certain selling activity takes place and that just sort of exasperates itself so once you're facing losses you don't want to invest in the stock market anymore so you you know more people start to get out no new capital is flowing in and you add the liquidity crunch to it and higher interest rate to it so you might as well uh, put your money in fd where a predictable 10 12% is way more attractive than a unpredictable thing so that's when the market starts going down and then at some point it reaches a stage where it's too cheap uh, for example a stock might be trading at five times its earnings it might be 100 crores a year but if the whole company is available for 500 crores and the company has 300 crores in, in cash So when it gets a ridiculous level, some astute investors come in, or there's a certain burst of liquidity, like for for now, and then people start buying, and then now people are making money, and the, the, that's the topic of conversations in every cocktail party. Oh, this one's, you know, he's doubled his money, he's he's gained fifty percent in a month, and 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 everybody wants to get into the game, and then FOMO takes place. So there's more capital pouring in. So it's you know the fire is further flamed, and it and then it reaches a point of uh ridiculous prices right? that's when it trades at 50 times earnings the same stock that was trading at 5 times earnings now is trading at 50 times earnings so now you would have to wait 50 years for that price to make sense if the stock price remained the same and at that point there needs to be some kind of trigger some kind of event or or sometimes not the interest rate might just you know go down the loan demand might uh, you know uh, disappear because of corona or anything and then people start selling and then the whole process repeats itself now addressing the lockdown where were we i think for the last 3 4 years uh it was a protracted not necessarily a crash but uh, a bear market um uh, the prices had reached ridiculous levels during the earthquake or uh, right after the earthquake uh, i had mentioned the the gdp uh, growth uh, in 2015 was uh, 2015 16 was 1% but nepse had gone up 100% uh, it doesn't make sense right uh, so it it needed to correct which it did for four years but then uh it stayed low for a bit too long uh, uh you know companies were growing their earnings by 20% 25% every year but the stock market actually went down by like 30 40% so the time had anyways come to uh, uh for the market to correct itself from from the negative territory and then go up uh and lockdown sort of interrupted that by a few months but that's about it the cycle didn't stop it's it's back up And now we don't know when it's uh, if it's going to continue going up or if it's going to take a turn the timing is not not certain but uh, what is certain is uh, what goes up has to come down yeah that's a very interesting set of events because um, you know you like you said it was uh, the cycle will eventually uh, correct itself Correct. now uh, the next question i would like to use this as a uh, transition from uh, the lockdown period to the post lockdown period so what kind of stocks did you see being traded during the lockdown and now after the lockdown has ended so uh, during the lockdown the market was pretty much shut so the few days that it was open or i guess the few weeks in between too uh we saw some selling uh, not much activity like not much selling or buying actually uh, during the lockdown Uh, so the market was pretty muted it didn't uh, hotel stocks are beaten up uh, really bad for about a week uh, but that's it. it it took one week for it to bounce back 
and and now it's at levels that it was uh, like now it's at pre 2016 levels so it's back at like all time highs uh, so post lockdown surprisingly uh, sectors uh, I, i guess to answer your question more specifically what are the stocks that that move more or are people are trading after the lockdown uh, it's it's been stocks that are thinly traded have seen uh, higher movements so uh your let's say noble banks your investment banks or or your large companies uh, didn't move for the longest time except uh, recently uh so the stock that thinly traded your lot of hydro stocks started going up like crazy for a month uh companies that will never earn more than let's say 10 crores are trading at 500 crores so then it got to a stage of being ridiculous but uh overall broadly speaking uh like banking stocks have not moved much broadly speaking i think certain sectors like non life insurance or even like the particular nepal reinsurance company so some have just gone uh you know ballistic uh, unrealistically high uh, but uh, certain stocks uh, remain undervalued so i think this this uh, this market has room to run as long as there's liquidity in the market as long as the interest rates stay low and as long as people's appetite for mega projects or, or just large new investments are are muted and i think you've done a lot of interviews so Uh, you've seen a lot of small businesses uh, been affected so for them to go to the next level they probably had to uh, take loans they're probably holding back so unless that comes comes back that loan demand comes back the interest rate is going to stay low and the market you know inversely is going to stay high so post lockdown where um, the stock market is a, is a good place to be we've we've been lucky that's for sure yeah perfect so now that the lockdown has been eased how is your portfolio performing right now you know uh everybody anyone you ask whoever is in the stock market everybody's made money uh, post lockdown uh it's like i i forget the quote but you know a big wave sort of a big tide carries all ships or all boats so that's what's happening so everybody's making money so if you ask me how my portfolio is doing now of course it's doing well but that's that's no credit to me uh, there's no credit to our team that's that's credit to the market uh what would be a a uh, more poignant question would be uh in a bear market how has your per- portfolio performed or during the lockdown did your portfolio uh, held, uh, hold up which it did so i think uh, being a value investor when you're buying a 100 rupee company for 50 rupees and not going after you know rumors and hey it's a bonus hai etc etc then uh, i think that would, that, that would be uh, more important as an investor to to see your performance during those times Uh, right now everybody is doing well sujan so uh, so it's it's kudos to to all of us who are in the market uh, that's great so what is the outlook for snowball capital for the next 3 months you know i don't know uh, we uh, we don't have uh, such a short term outlook i i hope the market stays high uh, it's it's kind of a double edged sword uh the market saying high is good for a portfolio all our clients are happy because they're getting you know very handsome returns on their money but uh it limits our buying opportunities uh so the outlook is favorable uh i think the market is going to be fine for for the next few months uh the hope is that uh, we get some more buying opportunities uh, i hope everybody else uh makes money but the stocks that i want to buy or we as a company want to buy i hope they crash so that we we can get better price for our portfolio <laughs> great so um your obji this is my uh, final question to you um what are the three things in your business that you need help with uh it's a good question um so obviously uh, being an investment fund uh, one of the major things we always need is capital we're still very small uh the things we want to do uh, in the capital market space uh, we want to actually uh, get more um, involved with the companies that we've invested in and being such a minute you know shareholder we have no uh, say whatsoever so capital one uh, second part would be uh, one of the biggest challenges we face investing in nepal is lack of transparency not uh, not necessarily from the government i think from the companies themselves uh, you know private sector they have to set an example uh that to lead the way uh, right because we cannot expect uh, others to so uh transparency and then good corporate governance from from private sector just disclosure of more information uh that would be something that would be very helpful to us and uh oh yeah one of the constant risks we face uh, when investing uh 
uh, is the flip flopping of uh, policies. So because banking, you know, financial sector is such an important part of the, the NEPSA index, uh, every little uh, directive uh, or even the way you calculate certain ratios according to the, the, the Rashtra Bank, they have huge implications on, on the profitability of, of the companies. So uh, we invest based on an existing regulatory framework. Uh, and if that keeps changing, it makes life very difficult for us. So more consistency from, from the regulator side would make life much easier for us. So in, to, to summarize, capital, uh, governance and, and transparency, and then just consistency in policy. So that would be three things that would be very helpful. Perfect. So I hope that this interview itself is helpful to you to get the word out and get these things established. So thank you, Eurofji, for coming on the interview series and sharing us your insights. Thank you, Sujan. Have a good evening. And before we leave, do you have any advice to our viewers who are in the stock market or want to get into the stock market? Uh, you know, I have plenty of advices, but uh, uh, unwarranted advice is not very valued. But I'll give uh, one or two anyways. Uh, one, uh, do not listen to experts, uh, could be anyone, do not listen to them. Uh, generally, uh, most people don't know what they're doing. Uh, sometimes I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, do not listen to experts, do your own research, do your own analysis, do not do technical analysis. There's no, uh, nobody on the Forbes billionaire list is a technical analyst, a lot of value investors out there. But uh, So don't listen to experts, do your own thing. And another thing, uh, another advice, a very simple advice I'd give is uh, something I alluded to earlier as well. Uh, when everybody's fearful, uh, when everybody's uh, afraid, scared, panicking, that's when you should go in hard. So that's when you should be really greedy. Uh, and when everybody's greedy and making money and, and going after each stock, and that's the conversation in every cocktail parties out there, that's when you should pull out. So, so, uh, not necessarily be a contrarian always, but uh, generally avoid the crowds. I think uh, those two would be uh, simple advices that I think will, will go a long way. Perfect. Thank you, Europe and Thank you for sharing your insights. And uh, thank you to everyone who joined us for this session. If you have any questions for Europe G, you can find his contact in the description or you can leave a comment in this video. I invite you to like this video, share it with your friends and follow our page, the NYU of Kathmandu chapter Facebook page. Our recording of this video will be present in the All the Contacts YouTube channel. So please subscribe to our channel. There are playlists of videos with entrepreneurs and small business owners from different parts of the world that share their insights. We'll have many more interviews like this in the upcoming weeks. Stay tuned. Goodbye. All right. Bye-bye.